Hey there, I'm Sarah McLaughlin. Thanks for joining me on the Chaos to Calm podcast, a podcast designed for women over 40 who think that changing hormones might be messing with their mood, metabolism and energy and want to change that in a healthy, sustainable and permanent way. Each episode will explore topics related to health and wellness for women in their 40s, like what the heck is happening to your hormones, what to do about it with nutrition, lifestyle and stress management, and inspiring conversations with guests sharing their insights and tips on how to live your best life in your 40s and beyond. So if you're feeling like you're in the midst of a hormonal storm and don't want perimenopause to be horrific, then join me on Chaos to Calm as I share with you how to make it to menopause without it wrecking your relationships and life. Hello and welcome to the Chaos to Calm podcast where we are always discussing how to master the chaos of changing hormones, mood, metabolism, energy in your 40s and beyond. I'm Sarah, the perimenopause naturopath, your host, welcoming you to episode number 11 and we are going to be discussing why the marina or the pill are not your only options for dealing with perimenopause symptoms. So maybe your doctor has suggested using the pill or putting a marina in if you've approached them for help with your perimenopause symptoms. I find it's really common option for anything sort of cycle related, heavy bleeding, pain, PMS, panacea for anything and everything. And it is really amazing that we do have options uh, and legal ones for preventing pregnancy and, and, you know, some kind of approach for hormones. It's really not a fit for everyone. And, and I do want to flag that it actually doesn't resolve your hormone issues. I touched on that in the last episode where we're talking about heavy bleeding, but just to start out strong there, These things are not going to resolve any underlying hormonal issues or imbalances. True in perimenopause, true at any phase of your reproductive life or your menstruating life. So teens, young adult, after pregnancies, whatever. It does not resolve hormone issues. Just putting it out there. It's going to work, yes, for many things. But it doesn't actually resolve the underlying issue. And that's really important. We want to resolve the underlying issue because if we don't, we're just, and we're suppressing some symptoms, your body is going to send you some flags, symptoms somewhere else in the body to tell you that things are out of balance. So just keep that in mind. It's really important. Suppressing symptoms, well, yes, it'll bring you some relief from that, but it's not going to resolve the underlying issue. And that your body is going to show that up somewhere else. Let's start by having a chat about what the pill, what the marina, you know, hormonal contraceptives like that. What are they? What do they do? So you've got a few different things that will fall into that. We've got the pill. Um, you might have heard uh, oral contraceptive pill, OCP, Implanon, and IUDs like the marina. Now, They have uh, synthetic forms of progesterone and or estrogen. Sometimes you get a pill, it's just a mini pill, it's just progesterone. Please understand that the structure of these hormones in these contraceptives is not the same as the hormones that your body makes. So, for example, the synthetic progesterone hormones in the oral contraceptive, the progestins. So they're not progesterone. They're actually more similar to testosterone. And that's why they can contribute to things like hair loss and weight gain in women. Because when we have relatively higher testosterone levels, it puts us in an insulin, it impacts your insulin, can put you into insulin resistance and fat storage mode. So I'll just go back and talk through the pill first up. The pill works by preventing ovulation, which means that there's no egg release from the ovaries. So you do not get the opportunity to make your own progesterone. Remembering the only way we make progesterone is by ovulating. So without ovulation, there's also no egg for fertilization. So 
preventing pregnancy. It's also important to note that if we're not ovulating, when you, you know, take, switch over to the sugar pills, it's actually not a period that you're having. It's just a withdrawal blade from those hormones because you haven't ovulated, you don't get a period. Of course, sometimes we do have anovulatory cycles um, and that can just, it's just the lining shedding in terms of it's built up too thick and it'll come away. This happens a lot in perimenopause and ovulatory cycles. I'm going to pause that thought there though, because that's like a whole nother podcast. Mental note to self. <laughs> Put that on the list, Sarah. Um, so yes, as I said, the synthetic hormones in the pill, usually a combination of estrogen and progesterone. Um, the hormones work by suppressing your natural hormone fluctuations and that prevents ovulation, prevents the thickening of the uterine lining and alters your cervical mucus as well. So it's difficult um, for sperm to get in. Now, the other thing, Marina, let's talk about that because that's, I actually, so first up, there's a whole lot of negative side effects and risk factors that are increased for women taking the pill in their 40s. So I am finding that for many clients, it's not on offer so much from the GP, which is good because, you know, you don't want to uh, increase your risk of having a thrombosis or um, a clot there. So the marina is often offered here as a panacea. (laughs) It's the cure for all perimenopause ills. It seems like it anyway. Um, So once in place, it continuously releases a small amount of uh, estrogen into the uterus, a version of it, a synthetic version, very low dose. So that is good. That hormone changes your cervical mucus. So it makes it really difficult for the sperm to reach and fertilize an egg and it thins the lining of the uterus. So it's less receptive to an egg an egg implanting there and a pregnancy being viable. So that's important to understand. And Marina actually lets you ovulate. It lets you create your own progesterone. So if you do need something for contraception, well, you know, you might not want a bonus baby in your forties or into your fifties. So it is a better option than the pill because it does let you ovulate and make your own progesterone. So yay for that. And it does have more of a localized effect. So, you know, the pill, those oral contraceptive, it goes all around your body systemic, it releases hormones into your bloodstream that have a systemic effect. All So meaning all over your body. The Marina's hormonal action is mostly localized, but uh, it, it, so the hormone levels in the bloodstream are much lower. So it does have some, benefits over the pill but it's still not going to address the underlying issues for things like heavy bleeding pain the pms so you might want to use the you know you might want contraceptive as i said for preventing bonus babies and if you're done building your family then absolutely you don't necessarily want a surprise baby and if your cycle is starting to change in terms of regularity then it can be really hard to know when you're going to be fertile and when you're not. So again, tracker, (laughs) track your cycles. And even if you do have the marina in, it's good to track your cycle leading into that. But also, so this is, I guess, a downside is that, yes, you won't necessarily have a period. So the marina, you don't, most women don't have a bleed. Some women do. Um, And if you're not having a bleed, though, you may still find yourself with PMS, sore breasts or breast tenderness because the marina doesn't stop those things. So just FYI, yes, you may not have a period. You may resolve the heavy bleeding. It's not necessarily going to resolve the other issues. And it's the same with the pill as well. Um, But anyway, you do need to address your need for contraception in the perimenopausal stage, especially if you've finished building your family. So... Ideally, you would use contraception for a year after menopause if you're in your 50s and two years if you're in your 40s when you go through to menopause because it can be yeah difficult to know. And of course, you're fertile two weeks before you actually have a period if it's going to come. So by the time your period or you know when you would have it, it's too late. So often women get told if they're having period issues 
like heavy bleeding and other symptoms that, you know, your GP will tell you to have these hormonal contraceptives to regulate that. I just want to say it doesn't regulate that. It just shuts down your own hormonal symphony, the pill. And um, while the marina does let you ovulate, it's true. It doesn't necessarily do more than approach your heavy bleeding. So using things like the pill, it's actually kind of putting you into a chemical menopause. Yeah. Because it's shutting down your own hormonal symphony. And the thing is with that, you're going to have to go through to menopause at some point. So again, we're suppressing the symptoms when we're using those things, but not dealing with the issue, which is looking at your overall health, looking at your nutrients, looking at your detoxification, elimination, and optimizing your health at that cellular level. So everything's working as best as it can to help support you and your body to adjust to the change in your hormones. So interestingly with hormonal contraceptions is that as i said they do work well with your heavy bleeding and sometimes people have benefit with things like acne but they actually can also increase other symptoms like hot flushes mood swings anxiety and low libido Hmm. so that can be really difficult is it perimenopause or is it your pill well what's contributing to how you're feeling there it's tricky so you can still as well even though as said before marina is localized some people some women may still experience side effects similar to what i just mentioned with the other forms of hormonal contraception breast tenderness mood swings headache acne nausea you can still get all of those things so you see that the pill or marina as a solution for perimenopause symptoms is really only about heavy bleeding and as i said it doesn't resolve what's contributing to that heavy bleeding so don't forget episode number 10 is all about heavy bleeding if you haven't listened to that go back and have a listen because i talk you through what to do and what to address and think about there as well so you do also want to consider the risks associated with the pill in your 40s because you do have a higher chance of cardiovascular issues like stroke and blood clots as well as a higher breast cancer risk which is why some doctors won't prescribe it in your 40s which is good uh, but also need to think about what the alternatives are there for you and so if you, you you know, if it's just contraception that you want it for, then you're looking at things like barrier methods, condoms, um, diaphragm, uh, there. And as I said, Marina has the least concerns hormone wise, but still check with your doctor, uh, there as to whether it's suitable for you. If it's more about perimenopause symptoms, then bioidentical HRT, is a better option there for you it may be difficult for you to access particularly in your 40s but if you're in your 50s you might have a better success with that some gps aren't comfortable prescribing it so you have to get a referral to an endocrinologist for that to happen the other option for your perimenopause symptoms is of course balancing your biochemistry with food as medicine my personal fave of course uh, and optimizing your health at that cellular level so You can see a big difference using the tools that you already have at your disposal. What you eat, how you sleep, how you're moving your body, stress management. I know, (laughs) it's not an episode if I don't mention it. So one of my clients, Bron, I want to tell you about her experience because she was a classic uh, early perimenopause symptom Uh, when she came to me and she says before working with Sarah my head was foggy I found concentrating difficult I was tired I wasn't sleeping well I was bloated and struggling with weight gain I couldn't leave the house for the first two days of my period my blood pressure increased suddenly and inexplicably I had tried all kinds of things and nothing was working Sounds really familiar, doesn't it? I hear that so often. But the key thing for Bron was that she couldn't leave the house for the first two days of her period. So now, 12 weeks on to her program, I feel better than I have in years. My head is clear. I have energy, better sleep, less bloating, fewer headaches, no night sweats. I can leave the house on day one of my period 
amazing. I'm more mindful of my food and how I eat. I feel like I have more control and have the knowledge, tools and confidence to tackle whatever comes next. It's been one of the best investments I have made in myself and my health. So good. I was so happy for Bron, And she really did notice some differences within the first cycle after implementing uh, the personalized nutrition plan that I created for her as part of her program time with me in the chaos to calm method. So it is really powerful. Choose something that you can do. Think about what you can do, not what you can't. Just as easy for your brain to think about what it can't do as what it can. But the outcome is so different for you if you focus on what you can do. Start making a change. Nail that change in your habit and then add in some more and uh, see how you go. And if you want help with it, of course, I'm here. So please reach out to me if you do want some help in creating those changes for yourself and you want to explore food as medicine, which is really sustainable and maintainable because you got to eat. You might as well harness the power of those meals across your day and your week. So just to finish up, I wanted to talk about, you know, the idea of regulating your cycle and those hormonal contraceptives using the pill it's just shutting down your hormones and masking the problem we really always want to approach looking at the underlying cause the root cause of what's going on and I always think about hairspray that song I can't remember the name of it right now apologies but they they put it best you you can't stop the beat you can try to stop the seasons girl but you know you never will so yeah sure you might shut down your hormone cycle and get some relief from some of those symptoms but the underlying imbalances the underlying changes in your biochemistry well they're still there and you know you're going to have to face the transition to menopause at some point the longer that you put it off the rougher that it can be it isn't all doom and gloom the fluctuations of perimenopause, they are a natural part of it, but we can smooth them out. We can support and optimize your body. You can do those small things and see a big difference and a big change. One of the best things that you can do that you can start with is addressing lifestyle. And you can do that. And, you know, you can look at what you're doing, what your schedule is like, what your kid's schedule is like, and see what you can offload or delete uh, or automate in your life to reduce your busyness because stress is the biggest blocker to health and happiness and weight loss uh, and a healthy cycle at any phase of life so yeah instead of it being horrific it can actually be a really wonderful period of reclaiming your health your energy your enthusiasm you get to decide what do you want next what do you want the next phase of your life to be that is what perimenopause is all about and that transition to menopause. It is change. Just like when you were a teen, you get to decide where you fit in the world, what you want to do, what you're passionate about. It's the same for us here in perimenopause into menopause. It's not the end. It is the beginning of the next phase of your life. You get to decide what you want to do and where you want to be and what you want for that chapter. You know, it's up to you to write the ending and decide what you want. On that point, I'm going to leave you. That is all for this episode number 11. So main takeaway here is I really want you to understand that and make informed choices about what you're taking or what you're doing with your body and know that, yes, these may help you with relieving things like heavy bleeding but it's really important to still have a look at and address the underlying cause so don't forget you can find the show notes and much more at www.chaostocalmpodcast.com and from there as well you can um, send me a message and let me know if you have any questions or any feedback any topics that you would like me to cover off what burning questions do you have about perimenopause? I'd love to create content just for you that is really relevant to you. And if you enjoy the show, please do rate and review me uh, wherever you are listening because that helps other women access or be shown my content as well and help them understand or realize that perimenopause doesn't have to be horrific. There's so much that you can do to take back control of your health and set the course that you want during this phase and the next phase of your life. 
Now, next time we will be talking about why your energy has tanked in perimenopause. So be sure to tune in there if you are feeling lethargic and exhausted. And until that time, I'm Sarah, the perimenopause naturopath, reminding you perimenopause does not have to be horrific and thanking you so much for sharing your time with me today. It's really common for women over 40 to experience the chaos of changing hormones, mood, metabolism, and energy. But I hope you know now that common doesn't have to equal normal for you or them. You can help others understand they aren't alone in feeling this way and that perimenopause doesn't have to be horrific by subscribing, leaving a review, and sharing this podcast with other women in their 40s and beyond. Thanks so much for listening and sharing your time with me today in this Chaos to Calm conversation.